Hello and welcome guys. In this session we are going to discuss structure of financial statements. So structure of financial statements. So there are three kinds of financial statements on which you base your managerial decisions as well as you analyze them if you are an investor. So these financial statements are income statements or it is also called as profit and loss in some countries, the balance sheet and the cash flow statement. Okay, so let's discuss them one by one. So first is income statement. Now this income statement is simply okay. So the structure of income statement is simply it starts with sales it starts with sales then you have direct cost so direct cost is cost that is directly associated with constructing the product or making the product then you have gross profit okay then you deduct indirect cost so this is less so it's a deduction indirect cost is also a deduction so it is less so it is cost that you incur but is not directly related to product example sales and marketing HR all these costs you incur them but they are not directly related to construction of a product majorly these are period cost rather than the product cost then you get something called as EBITDA this is also known as operating profit and it is an acronym for earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization so it is earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization okay now from this EBITDA you first deduct depreciation and then you deduct amortization depreciation is the cost that you incur on your tangible assets or fixed assets amortization is the cost that you incur on your intangible assets now what is depreciation and amortization example let us say a college is spending 100 crores on constructing or let's say 1 million so to make it more simple the college is spending 1 million dollars on renovating a classroom okay or re renovating a building now this building is going to be used for next five years now what we do 1 million is directly spent by a college so the reality is it is spending it in this year so 1 million will be the cash outflow in the cash flow system or the cash flow statement but income statement has an accounting rule called as matching principle so all the expenses should match benefits that are derived from those expenses so you are renovating the building or you are renovating the classroom this classroom will be used for next five years so benefit of this classroom you're going to take in the next five years so it is much more practical to divide the spending in five years that is exactly what we do with depreciation so we create an asset of one million dollars and then we divide this asset that is we expense this asset out in five years so 
depreciation on amortization is nothing but expenses that you incur on your assets after that you have a bit earning before income interest and tax a bit you deduct interest interest is the cost that you pay on your debt so it is cost on your debt and just to make it little bit more certain this is less this is less interest cost is also a deduction so it is less so you are left with earnings before tax or profit before tax from that you deduct tax the tax that you have to pay to the government that is provincial city as well as federal tax and finally you get earnings after tax also known as profit after tax this things goes into the balance sheet as retained earnings so this is transferred from income statement to the balance sheet as retained earnings okay so there is a flow from income statement to balance sheet now couple of things that you have to keep in mind income statement is not a point statement like balance sheet it is a period statement so what do you mean by period statement it has a starting date and it has a end date so it can be a quarterly income statement a monthly income statement or a yearly income statement so it has a starting date and a end date next is there are certain things that ha happen after this pat is determined so after this pat is determined you can divide it you can have some things that is paid out of this pat or this earnings called as dividends okay as well as you can show this pat as earnings per share eps so dividends is a payment that you make that you make payment that you make to shareholders so it's a cash payment that you make in shareholders retained earnings goes down by the amount of dividend you paid so pat after adjusting for dividend flows into balance sheet in retained earnings then there is earning per share eps eps is simply profit after tax divided by number of shareholders so eps is profit of the company represented as a per share quantity so you are replacing you are re representing total profits of the company for a particular shareholder the next statement that we are going to discuss is the balance sheet so balance sheet has three aspects to it we have assets liabilities and we have equity now assets are things that are giving you current benefit or they will give you benefit in the future liabilities are payments that you are currently making or you are going to make in future and equity is the balancing figure what do you mean by balancing figure so assets should equal to liabilities plus equity so assets equal to liability plus equity this statement should always balance so equity that we get is a balancing figure between assets and liability so equity is equal to assets minus liability this is also known as residual claim of shareholders this is called as residual claims that shareholders have okay now assets are further divided into current assets fixed assets or non current assets and something called as goodwill liability is further divided into current liabilities 
नॉन करंट लाइबिलिटीज एंड इक्विटी हैज रेसिडियो लर्निंग्स दैट इज एंड शेयर होल्डर्स कैपिटल सो यू हैव शेयर होल्डर्स कैपिटल एंड residual earnings to be simply put there are there is more more complex representation but this is the most simplest form of it so assets are divided into current assets what are current assets current assets are benefit that you are going to get within a year non current assets all the benefits that you are going to get beyond a year goodwill is amount here that you pay over the market price because you think there is some synergy it is also equated to brand value that you pay for acquiring different assets or companies liability has current liability and non current current liability means payments that you have to make within a year non current liability means things that you have payments that you have to make beyond a year within equity you have shareholders capital the amount that was raised by shareholders or shareholders interest in your companies as well as you have residual earnings okay the final statement is cash flow statement so let me go little below so cash flow statement cash flow statement has three parts cash flow from operations cash flow from investing and cash flow from financing what is cash flow cash flow is whatever cash flows into your company as well as out of your company so it consists of cash inflow as well as cash outflow okay now what is cash flow from operations it is cash inflow and outflow that results out of main business of the company or main operations of the company so cash flow from operations is cash inflow and outflow that is resultant because of the company right company's main operations or main business so whatever cash flow happens because of main business that comes in cash flow from operations then you have cash flow from investing this is nothing but amount of cash flow because the company is investing outside as well as it is uh, some people are investing in the company so if you pay dividend to your shareholders or if you raise money if you are invested if you are investing in some other company com company shares then it becomes a cash flow from investing so whatever cash inflow and outflow that happens due to investing activities of the company that comes under cash flow from investing that is not the main part of business okay example if microsoft buys apple shares then it is cash flow from investing and apple shares pay dividend to microsoft that is again cash flow from investing because that is not a part of microsoft's main business then you have cash flow from financing <clears throat> it is nothing but money raised from external players as well as money paid to external players example it includes amount you raise through debt it includes amount you raise through equity it includes interest payments that go towards debt it includes payments that go towards dividends so a confusing factor is dividends if you are giving money to shareholders it will be cash flow from financing because you have taken money from shareholders so you are giving it back so it is included in cash flow from financing but if you are getting dividends from the investment that you made it will come as cash flow from investing so cash flow statement is divided into three aspects cash flow from operations cash inflow and outflow due to main operations of the of the company cash flow from investing cash inflow and outflow due to investing activity that company undertakes 
and cash flow from financing cash raised from external players as well as cash paid to external players because you need money you raise money that comes under cash flow from financing in the next class we are going to see how to analyze each one of them so we'll be starting with income statement then with balance sheets and then finally with cash flows